Hello everybody! Hope you're doing great and are ready for some volcano updates. Activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula continues and we received the important in SAR images and they have given us a much better understanding of the situation. There's also more activity outside of the Reykjanes Peninsula worth talking about, like the news from Askja and the surprising news from Hofsjökull. I'll also take a quick look at the areas that might host this possible eruption. So, stay tuned. I'm gonna begin with the Reykjanes Peninsula. It's now been two weeks since Reykjanes began shaking violently, and in the recent days the presence of magma has become obvious. Yesterday we received the latest in SAR images from the Sentinel-1 space probes, but the data covered a 24-day span from April 27th to May 21st. After our experts played with the images, we got to see the end result, and it shows us the uplift that is being caused by magma at depths of 6 to 4 kilometers. In this 3-week span, the ground has risen up to 45 millimeters, or 4.5 centimeters, which is not too shabby. Although, by comparing this to the ground deformation observed during the intrusion that led to the eruption in Geltingadalir, we can see that this current one is much weaker. That can also be seen through the earthquake activity, but back then, over 33,000 earthquakes were detected in just two weeks. Now in that same time span, we've only detected around 3,300. The dike that is forming now at depths of 6 to 4 kilometers is growing horizontally. Why, you may ask? Well, magma just follows the path of least resistance, which in this case is horizontally, and this intrusion is also not that powerful. This is a little bit similar to the situation back in early 2021, and it's clear that there's continuous influx of magma into the dike based on the slight but constant uplift. Just last week, experts were finally able to fix the equipment in Askja, which had been down since December due to horrible weather conditions. So, accurate measurements have resumed, and the latest data shows us that the uplift has been continuing while we weren't looking and has now reached 30 centimeters of uplift since August. That's no joke. That's almost half a meter. This uplift is due to magma which is building up in Askja's magma chamber, at depths of 3 to 2 kilometers. But this doesn't mean an eruption is around the corner, despite the shallow depths. Askja could take years or even decades to build up, so we'll just have to wait and see. Then there's a strange activity in Hofsjökull, Iceland's most mysterious volcano system. We know almost nothing about it. There are no signs of any eruptions from the main caldera in the last 10,000 years, but there are some younger lava flows eruptions on the volcano's flanks. Hofsjökull deserves a video on its own, but the strange activity was the earthquake that struck in Hofsjökull's huge caldera. At 3.2 in magnitude, it is the single largest earthquake from Hofsjökull's caldera in more than 50 years. That is very strange, but there seems to be no follow-up activity so it was just a random jolt. And that's all the data I have for you today. Now let's talk about the possible eruption sites. It's always interesting to try and see and predict where the most likely eruption site could be. So let's go take a quick look. By looking at the uplift, we can get an idea of where the magma is. With all of the data we have, our experts have been able to mark the magma dike and is around 7 to 8 kilometers long and lies like this from southwest to northwest. In this position, the most likely eruption sites would be northwest of Mount Thorbjörn, as there are a lot of faults and fissures in the area which might make it easy for magma to shoot up relatively unnoticed. But there's also another spot where an eruption could surface and it's the ugliest. I barely want to mention it. It's the area I marked on screen, Sund Nuka Sprunka. This fault or fissure is the site of older eruptions from the Schwarzenki system and sent lava flows down south which laid the foundation for the town of Grindavík. The last three eruptions from the Schwarzenki system have all erupted more to the west of the previous one, and the most recent, Arnarsetushraun or Eldvarparhraun, is on the edges of Schwarzenki's reach. So the next eruption might be a reset of this cycle, meaning it would erupt from the Sund Nukasprunka fissure. But let's pray to God that won't happen, and also thank God that everything I just said was purely speculative and there's not even a high chance of an eruption even happening in the first place. But in the end, here are the most likely areas of an eruption 
based on decently educated guesses. Let's see how this ages. It's going to be exciting to see what the future has in store for us. And I'll be sure to update you on the situation as soon as more exciting news break out. So now it's just time to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video. And thanks for watching.